Welcome to a new episode in the Multiverse video series. Today we're going to be learning about Keras.js or Keras for JavaScript. This is a tool that allows you to run any deep learning model in your web browser. Let me show you an example. So last year, there was a post in Hacker News on how to create an R Markdown document to actually contain a Keras model inside it that is completely independent from the original model built in R and that can run inside your web browser. And uh, the particular example that, you, that we use uh, look like this. It's basically an R Markdown slide, which contains an area where you can draw digits. And those digits are recognized using the MNIST dataset and training Keras using a very simple model. So the accuracy of this, of this model is not particularly great. It's just meant to be an example of how you can reuse your models directly in JavaScript. Uh, so for instance, we can try to draw a number zero. Oh. And uh, this would recognize that the number that we draw is the number zero. And again, the accuracy is actually not that great. Um, we could try to do number two and things like that. But um, if, you, if you don't draw your numbers similar to MNIST, uh, this particular model is not that great. So definitely the model needs, needs improvements. But what is interesting for this video is to uh, kind of like try to understand how you could build um, JavaScript only applications from the models that you've trained in Keras. So it's kind of like going behind the scenes and you know, revealing the secret on how this is done. And, you know, I'm sure many of you already figured it out, but like, we're going to do it step by step. So the first interesting thing to note is that, uh, you know, if, if you want more context of this uh, particular example, and in general, I should also mention that there's multiple ways of deploying models uh, in uh, TensorFlow. So you don't need, you don't need to deploy your models uh, to JavaScript only. You can also deploy them to CloudML you can also re deploy them to say R Studio Connect. You can uh, also obviously just use your models locally, and why not? So, so there's many different ways in which you can actually reuse your uh, deep learning models. You don't need you don't need to use them in the browser. Honestly, uh, this is a pretty scoped use case to deploy the models in the browser, but it's also a pretty fun one. So uh, I thought it was worth sharing. If if you want to know, learn more about on how to deploy models, there's an R Studio conference talk on how to um, deploy the models to other services. And this is like a more comprehensive talk that maybe it's worth taking a look. Because today we're going to focus only on deploying models to the web browser. And uh, the magic behind this technology is uh, a library, a JavaScript library called Keras.js. And basically Keras.js allows you to transform a Keras model into a model that is executable in JavaScript with this uh, Keras.js library. So it does all the work for you, um, you know, transfers the weights, optimizes them, and then allows you to rerun your deep learning model in the browser. Um, there's actually a few examples here. Um, you can play with them in the trans uh, transcranial.github.io slash Keras.js site. So this is like a similar one to the one that we were uh, looking at today. And, you know, it, uh, it's a little bit more sophisticated. You can also see the actual uh, convolutions uh, from this particular network and then the activations. And it's, it's, just, it's just really fun and gives you an insight of what the deep learning network that uh, it's using. In our particular case, we're only using the, uh, you know, we're building all in R and in R Markdown and we're only kind of like only building the, uh, the drawing area. And uh, yeah, so interestingly enough, if you want to geek out about this, like it also uses the GPU using uh, WebGL. So yeah, that's, that's pretty fun. So again, it has a lot of, a, a lot of other examples. Uh, you can play with them. It's interesting. Uh, so for instance, here is, I believe, oh, it's loading weights and why not? Uh, but I believe this, is uses, uh, this uses ImageNet to actually um, do image classification directly on your browser. So, you know, the, the, the thing that is worth mentioning is that nothing is, you know, when, when, you're, when you're using these models, uh, it's not, 
you know, it's not actually going to the server, it's actually doing the evaluation in the in the browser, which is it's pretty cool. We could actually you could actually try these with other images and why not, which would be pretty fun. Uh I wonder if we should just copy. I don't know what's gonna happen with this. I haven't copy my chatters. See, so you can also you, you do your custom yeah, this is not great. I mean, it's just basically uh, bottle cap. Yeah, this this is not great. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like a half uh, half logo and why not? So you definitely want to um, you know like use things that are that are a little bit more relevant. But yeah, for for the for ImageNet, like the things that it trained, uh, you know, it obviously has good performance because that's that's what it was trained for. But anyways, this this is uh, kind of like besides the topic of this video. You know, this the idea of here is that it's giving you kind of like a sense of um, how you can run models in the browser. So how can you do this from R? Well, there's uh, there's a little package which happens not to be even in CRAN, which is called Keras.js, which is exactly what we use to create the R Markdown document that um, that uh, that embeds Kera, uh, the Keras.js library for you. So you will have to use the remotes package to install this library and install from GitHub. So in this case, you want to say R Studio Keras.js. And it's basically going to ins install a wrapper package that simplifies the process of uh, transforming the Keras library output, which you can train with Keras in, in R. And once you have that model, it basically transforms it to a model that is compatible with JavaScript. Uh, there are some examples here of what you can do. So there is a pre-trained model of MNIST, MNIST, which is what the package comes with, and it comes with a it comes with a conversion function. It actually only comes with one. This package only comes with one function: Keras.js convert. So you want to execute this, and basically what this creates is it transforms the model. It gives you a Keras-MNIST bin file, and then what it's gonna do is just show you a little preview. And this preview is on uh, on JavaScript, right? So you can look at the sources, and you know you could potentially reuse this in other other applications. So un unfortunately, uh, in order to build these JavaScript only applications, you would still have to do a lot of JavaScript manipulation um, on on your own. I'm trying to look at where the model, yeah. So just just to give you a sense of which are the libraries that you would have to include. For, so in this case, uh, you want to include keras.min.js, which you can uh, you can download from the CDN or just searching uh, Google. And then um, that's pretty much it, actually. Like the other stuff was just to make this uh, preview interesting. And then you would want to also uh, load the actual uh, load the actual model. So yeah, you want you want to do both things. You want to load the um, the actual. You want to load the actual uh, Keras.js library, and you also want to load this particular bin file, which is the Keras-mnist.bin. So again, we can give you a preview with this package just to make sure that it works. So for instance, in this case, we're predicting. Uh, basically empty output which is not very useful but um, you know you can see here the probabilities associated to it which most of them are pretty low like uh, you know everything is underneath uh, 26 percent i believe but mostly you know the, the model is not recognizing anything because this is not an actual uh, digit from from mnist and oh i forgot yeah here you can have the actual code snippet that you can just copy paste and post it on your website and basically we'll give you this one However, like this is not really interesting. This is not a user interface that, you know, like any any people would be interested in using. Like no one is gonna change the weights in this way. Um, so realistically, you need to also use JavaScript in order to pass the correct values to the predict function. Um, so so for that, there's another package, which um, it's on CRAN and uh, it's an HTML widget that we also use in this particular video. So we can say install packages pixels. And what this is gonna do is basically install another package, which is an HTML widget that allows you to capture digits. So we can look at, 
look at that package exactly here and um, just take a look at how this looks like and this and, and again this is um, this is a particular uh, package that you can use anytime and uh, it just happens to be an HTML widget to help you recognize these digits it doesn't do much apart from you know it gives you the actual matrix that contains that particular image which is great uh, but uh, in order to use this library in JavaScript, you, uh, you actually need, well, what I have to do for this particular demonstration was to extract myself the library. So again, this is all open source and I believe the, um, yeah, the license almost sure is, yeah, maybe it might be Apache or even MIT license. Let's see, uh, yeah, it's just MIT. So you can do basically whatever you want with this repo. Uh, so you can go to the uh, widgets uh, widgets folder and you can look at the library and you could potentially copy it which is just uh, kind of like a canvas application that does that which is pretty much what i uh, what i did in in this particular uh, r markdown demo what what i did is basically uh, if, if you want to actually if you want to look at the sources of any of the r studio conference previous r studio conference uh, talks you can look at those under uh, this repo and uh, kind of like what we can do here is just kind of like create this exact same R markdown file which the things the things to not notice is that it's using uh, Sharingan to create the presentation and it uses a couple of things it uses the JavaScript uh, pixels.js kind of like a digit capture um, support for uh, just for capturing the digits and it also uses the uh, Keras-MNIST library that I just uh, mentioned, and that's pretty much it. Then you, you know, you need you need to have a little script to plug those two together, the output from one uh, from one widget to the other one, and this needs to be made manually for this particular case. You can you can also actually build a shiny application that doesn't use everything that doesn't use Keras.js, and that's going to be much easier to build. But you know, to be on the forefront on you know, deep learning models on the browser, you you know, it will take you a little bit more extra work, but it's completely doable. So what we're gonna do here is basically just execute these Keras JS R Markdown file. And we're gonna get the entire presentation, but one of the slides, uh, it's basically this embedded model, which uh, is able to recognize to some degree the actual the actual digits. All right, well, thank you so much. I hope that you also enjoyed this particular video. But before uh, before I move on, I should also give you a kind of like a just sneak preview into what is the library that is up and coming and that uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have soon also a library for uh, doing this from R. Um, the successor of Keras.js is something called TensorFlow.js and it's on the TensorFlow website. And if you had to execute this by hand, it's not, it's not that terrible. It's mostly just one single comment that you can use to uh, convert your model. And it, it works in a similar way. You give it, you give it a, 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 mo a TensorFlow model and it outputs a JavaScript model with a, a associated TensorFlow JS library that you can embed. So maybe we'll leave this for a different video, but it's good, good for you to know if, uh, if you're planning to invest a lot of time in Keras.js you should also probably look into TensorFlow JS. All right, well, thank you so much. Hope this uh, gave you a broad overview of how to execute deep learning models in your browser. And uh, we'll see you next.